everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a tutorial and I'm going to be taking you through the sort of step-by-step -step process of how to self-publish a picture book on KDP, which is Amazon's self-publishing print on demand service. So I'm going to show you how to turn your illustrations into a picture book, how to create a template that will include the bleed and the safe zones, and I'll explain what all of that means in a little bit. I'm gonna tell you what kind of pages you might want to include, like a copyrights page, a title page, end papers. And I'll also show you how to add text in interesting ways, if you fancy <laughs> being a little bit more exciting with your text and maybe like put text on a curve or like wrap the text around a shape. Oh, and I'm also gonna talk a little bit about ISBNs whether you should buy your own or whether you should use the KDP free version. So I'm gonna talk about different options in that. I am gonna share my book when it's finished at the end. So stay tuned if you wanna see that one. And yeah, let's get into the video. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna look at is the size that KDP actually lets you print at. So if you go to this page here, so if you click trim size specifications, it will tell you the different size options that you have. So regardless of where you're planning on getting your book printed, make sure that they do the size that you want to do for a start. As you can see, there are different sizes for paperback and hardcover. And then it also says the minimum and maximum number of pages as well. For a paperback, the minimum number of pages is 24. Now the hardcover, the minimum number of pages is 75 pages. So unless you're doing a graphic novel, you're probably not gonna be looking at doing a hardcover. So paperback is the option that we're gonna go with. The size that I'm going with is gonna be eight by 10 inches. Now they do this by width and then height. So yeah, one thing that I would definitely recommend is having a look at some different picture books just to kind of work out what kind of size you want to do it at. So you can have a look at some different picture books that you have or maybe like go to a library and just like measure them or like just check what sort of sizes they are. I think you might even be able to find like dimensions of picture books maybe on some different shop websites. But yes, as you can see, all of these picture books are various different sizes. We've got some that are landscape, we've got some that are portraits, and these two are portrait, but like slightly different sizes. We've got some that are square. So you've got a lot of different options for what size you want. Right, so now you've chosen your size, you need to make sure you add on the bleed, which is usually one eighth of an inch. Yeah, including a bleed around your illustrations just means that when your book gets trimmed, you're not gonna have like any weird like white borders um, or anything like that. And your illustration is gonna go like full bleed to the edge of the paper. So that is what the bleed means. And there is this page on Amazon that explains the bleed as well. Then if you click on this, this is some examples of page sizes with and without bleed. So like I said, I'm gonna be doing this one here, this one here, which is eight inches by 10 inches. And so the page size with the bleed is 8.125 inches. It's basically adding on one eighth of an inch. But yeah, so we're gonna set up a template for a double page spread. But yes, yeah, so your template is gonna be the width doubled and then we want to add on one eighth of an inch to all four sides. I'm using Photoshop. I'm actually using an old version, which is CS5, but you could use any software that you have, like Affinity Photo or anything like that. So I'm creating a new document. I'm doing eight by 10. So first of all, I'm gonna change these to inches. Because the width of mine is eight, we are times that by two. So it's 16 plus 
1 8 of an inch on the left and the right, so it's going to be 16.25 inches. But yeah, so we just need to times the width by two because we are doing a double page spread, so a left page and a right page. The height we don't need to times by two. The height is then going to be 10 plus the 1 8 bleed on the top and the bottom. So the height is going to be 10.25. I'm actually going to do 600 DPI, but I would recommend doing at least 300. And so make sure that when you're creating your artwork, that you create it at a good resolution if you're doing that digitally. Um, and if you're doing it traditionally, make sure you scan that in at a good resolution. Because this is going to be a printed book, I'm going to click CMYK for printing. And that is all of that. So now we're going to add the margin. So we're going to add the bleed and the safe zones and the gutter. Um, if your rulers aren't there, you can use Control R or Command R, depending on if you have a uh, Mac or Windows. Right, so it set my rulers up in centimeters, so we want to change that. Oh, there we go. So go over to Edit Preferences and Units and Rulers. I think this might have this might be in a different location if you have a more up-to-date version of Photoshop. Uh, but yes, just find the bit that says units and rulers, and then you want to change this to inches. So like we said, we want to add one eighth to all four sides. So we're going to add the margins for the bleed. So that's 0.125 of an inch. Now you can either do this by like, you know, adding a new guide and putting this in, or you can use your ruler, basically kind of like eyeball it. But yes, yeah, so you could just eyeball it and use your rulers. So for example, if we drag this out, so that's the edge and we want one eight, so that's about there. And we can do that from the top and bottom as well. So basically I'm just use, looking at the first marking on the ruler and just lining it up with that. So I'm going to do a new guide and I'm going to do 50% vertically. So that will split that page into half. So that now I've got a left page and a right page. Yeah, that's the bleed margins added. So that section will be trimmed off. But now we're also going to add a safe zone because sometimes you just get errors and things get trimmed a little bit extra. So generally in printing, you always have like a safe zone as well. So the safe zone is an extra half an inch. The new guide, so vertically, that would be 0 0.625. Anyway, yes, yeah, so make sure you add in all your safe zone. You might also want to add in like an area for the gutter as well. So again, put in like half an inch away from the, from the middle of the page. Okay, right, I'm now gonna do my Blue Peter moments because I have actually started setting this up already. So I am going to open my one that I've done previously. But yeah, so here is what I have been working on already. But yeah, as you can see as well, you can still see my margins here and everything that is important is within the safe zone. But yeah, so if you've created your artwork without the bleed, then something you can do is just use the clone tool. But yeah, just use the clone brush, clone all the way around the illustration to just give yourself a little bit extra room and make sure all the important bits stay inside the safe zone. As you can see, I've added some text and this is text that I've done to sort of go around the shape of the wave because I just thought that seemed, I don't know, kind of fun. So to add text, you can either come along here and click this T or you can press T on your keyboard. But yeah, so you can just click and you can add text and that will just be in a straight line. If you want to add it in like a funky shape, the way I do it is I use the pen tool and all I'm going to do is I'm just basically going to kind of copy the shape of the pen tool. So I'm just making some clicks with the mouse and I'm just kind of dragging it along. 
and I'm just copying the shape and I'm just if you kind of click and hold and drag it sort of changes the shape a little bit but yes yeah, so you can create a shape like that then click on the text tool and click here and then you can start typing oh you might find as well that you start typing and then it kind of stops so you just need to drag this little thing here and you just drag this circle all the way to the end go back to your text tool and click there and then we can carry on right so the waves correct closer and closer you can change the fonts you can change the size but yeah one tip i'd say with text is make sure your text is readable make sure there's nothing behind it that kind of makes it hard to read the fonts that i'm using i actually bought and i think i actually bought it off creative marketplace but there's various different websites you can go to find a font and quite often you can just type in a sentence or a couple of words and it will give you an example of what the font looks like. So that might be a good way to test out some different kind of styles of font. So something I should mention is that the first page of your book will be a single page like so rather than a double page spread so you can either if you want to make like a separate template or you can basically just still use like the double page spread template but just use half of that so the first page it's on like the right hand side so you've got like the back of the cover here and then the first page is on the right hand side so if you're designing that then you'd use the right hand side of the page for that but yeah so just remember that the first page of your book is going to be a single page now this book the first page is actually also the title page so that is something that you could do you could make the first page of your book the title page yeah the title page in this case it simply has the title the author I think this is the author and the illustrator and then it also has the publishers on that as well and some artwork end pages is another thing that you could add to your book now with paperbacks you don't always get end pages so for example that one doesn't have any end pages and you're more likely to have end pages with a hardback book and that's just because the end pages get glued down to the hardcover so when you're when you're doing a paperback book you don't often have anything printed on the back of the cover you can do but i don't think that's an option that kdp offer so if you want to have end pages you have to kind of think about how you're going to do them because like i mentioned the first page of the book is going to be a single page and not a double page for in this paperback version of sweep what they've done is they have this tiny motif of leaves here and then they've done the end papers here on the next page you might just want to have a single page for the end papers so if you have like a pattern or something just doing that on a single page rather than the double page that could also work the end papers are just kind of like optional things but i just think it adds like quite a nice touch okay so i'm now going to do the copyrights page and i thought i would also add a this book belongs to where the owner of the book can write their name and i just thought that that would make it a bit more interesting so i've just added a rectangle because i want my text to be within within this rectangle now i'm just gonna pick a sort of normal font and i'm obviously gonna change the size a lot let's just choose arial for now we can always change it if we want to pick a different one for the copyrights page again i've just had a look to see what other people are doing yeah this this one the copyrights page is at the front and they've also done a dedication there as well so that's something else that you could do 
Yeah, so lots of the copyright pages, they all seem to kind of follow the same kind of format. So they'll say first published, the place it was published, the year and who, who it was published by. And then they'll do a text copyrights and illustration copyrights. And then they will all usually say something along the lines of all rights reserved. Also on the copyright page, you put your ISBN number. With the ISBN number, KDP do actually give you a free version, but with the free version, you can only sell your book through Amazon. So you wouldn't be able to sell your book anywhere else. Yes, alternatively, you can actually buy your own ISBN number. These are kind of expensive. So it's, I think about 18 or 90 pounds for one, depending on where in the world you live. Or you can usually get sort of discounts if you bulk buy them, which is good if you're planning on self-publishing several books um, or several different formats of your book. But if you only want one, then just weigh up the pros and cons. Yeah, and decide whether or not you want the option of doing like the wider distribution. But yes, if you do buy your own ISBN number, then you'd put the ISBN number on the copyright page as well. If you don't have an ISBN number, then you could just put first published and then you could just put the date. So first published in 2022. To do the copyright symbol, hold down Alt and then type 0169 and then that will give you the copyright symbol. Right, so this is our copyrights page and now I just need to buy my ISBN number. If you're going with the free ISBN, then you can just skip that part um, and leave that blank. So there's different companies that sell ISBN numbers in different countries. So I'm in the UK, so I'm going to use this one here. But as you can see, one ISBN is £91, or you can get 10 for £169. Or if you want 100, which I don't think I want 100 right now. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna just do this, add it to my basket. Um, you then need to actually register. So this is the page that you get and it wants to know your publishing name. Yeah, so it says consider your publishing name carefully. This is the name you will use to publish your work and represents your brand as a publisher. Yeah, it can be a chosen trading name, for example, Bluebell Publishing or your own name. So to upload your finished book to KDP, you have to save the pages as individual pages rather than spreads. So I like to create the template and see how everything is going to look like as a spread, first of all, because then you get an idea of how the book goes together. But in order to upload it, you have to then save it as individual pages. So I save a copy as a TIFF. I do a TIFF because the quality is better than a JPEG and JPEGs, if you continually save over them, they end up getting compressed and they lose quality. So I save it as a TIFF and then I use the crop tool and I've got this sort of snapping setting on so that you can see when I get to the middle of the page, it kind of automatically snaps to the center of the page. So I save a left page and a right page separately. And yeah, you have to do this for the whole book and then you will make your PDF. So to make the PDF, I used Bridge. Yeah, so first of all, make sure like the size of your PDF is the same size as your page. And then just select all of your inside pages, including all like the copyright pages and the end pages and everything. The only thing that you don't need now is the cover because that you will upload separately. Yeah, so just put the pages all in order as individual pages and then make sure the quality is high and you don't want any margins and then just save that as your PDF. And then it's time to upload it to KDP. So either register or sign in to KDP and you just need to fill in your name, your address, date of birth, those sorts of details. You click create 
and then here's where you fill in all the information about your book. So you want to fill in your name and any contributors. So if you worked with another author or an illustrator, you can put those details in there. And you can also save this as a draft throughout the process and you can like come back to it later. The description, this is the product description that the customer will read. So you could include the blurb, and also just any information about the book, maybe why you created it, and also who would enjoy it. It says keywords are optional, but I would definitely fill them in. You can do a little bit of research, see what similar books are out there. And then I just kind of tried to describe like the themes of the book, the themes or the content. Yeah, just describe like the content of the book. So I put in ocean picture book, marine life children's book, illustrated ocean children's book, seaside book for children. So yeah, I've just did sort of various different combinations to describe what the book <laughs> was like. Yeah, so categories can be a little bit confusing, but have a look and see what other people are using as their categories. I put it under juvenile fiction because it's a picture book. So I did juvenile fiction, marine life, I also did fairy tales and folklore as well. But yeah, just do a little bit of research, see what kind of similar books there are to yours and just see what keywords and categories they're using. So then with the ISBN, you can either tick the for the free one that KDP gives you or you can use your own. Yeah, you tick the use your own, enter in your own number. The imprints is the publishing name that you chose. So whichever company you bought your ISBNs from, you would have filled in like the publishing name. And then you need to choose your size. So obviously again, make sure it's the right size. You want to make sure, like we said before, that you have a bleed. Yes, yeah, so you wanna select the bleed option because otherwise you're either gonna get something chopped off that you don't want chopped off or you're gonna get white margins. Cover finish, you can go with matte or glossy. I went for matte, just generally I prefer the kind of finish of matte picture books, but you could always order a sample copy and then like see which version you prefer. And then where it says upload the manuscript, that's where you upload your PDF of all the inside of the pages. And it takes a little while to load. So you upload your cover separately and I used the template that they provided. You don't get much of a spine with the paperback books. So I didn't put any writing on the spine. I had my artwork and again, all the important bits were within the margins. And then I just added my title, my name, the author's name and the blurb as well. And oh, and then the other thing I added was the barcode. So the barcode has got my ISBN number on it. And actually the barcodes you have to pay for separately. So that's an additional charge along with the ISBN and you get that from the same place. But yeah, so then you can upload your finished book cover. So it gives you a preview, which is really good. So just check it through, see if you've made any mistakes. If you have, you have to upload everything again. So you have to make your PDF again, which can be a little bit annoying, but sometimes it happens. But yeah, and then at this point you can save it as a draft and then you can order a proof copy. Then once you're happy with your book, go back and then click publish your book. I hope you found this video helpful. Here is how the book turned out. So yeah, this is Mother Seagull and the Ocean King. Yeah, so it's a folktale, fairy tale style picture book and it celebrates wildlife, friendship, resilience. It's got lots of lovely sea creatures in it and it has an Ocean King who was one of my favourite characters to illustrate. And yeah, it's very bright and colourful. If you're interested in getting a copy, the link to that is going to be in the description. I am planning on illustrating more books in the future. So if you're interested, make sure 
you subscribe for more. Yeah, I'm sending you lots and lots of love. I hope you've had a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and I'll see you in my next video. Okay, bye. Okay. <laughs> and a clap. Is that loud enough? There we go. Right. I'm trying to be professional and use a microphone. Okay. So, right, what was I saying? Okay, so, yeah, so, <laughs> wow. <laughs> How many so's do we want to say? I'm going to do my blue pizza moment because I actually have, I'm so blurry. Please focus on my face. I'm over here. Here I am. Right, we turn this on again. I think I'm in focus. Do another clap for the audio and my hands. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I know that you're trying to do anything to make me smile. Oh